from your individual points of view, just how special are we? What do you think? Who wants to begin that I'll one? I'll start. Yeah. Of course. I think humans have unique qualities, like every species does. And every species is probably intelligent in its own environment, right? Because of what we're talking about. But humans, you know, we're great at modifying our environment. We have language, which is still yet to be looked at with other species, seriously. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we are unique, but that doesn't mean we're the only ones that are unique or special. Mm. I take an evolutionary perspective. I think that all of the species that exist today have evolved for as long as we have. And so every one of them is unique, right? right? No, as long as, long as we have, right? Uh, we all have, a, have common ancestors. Even the cephalopods and I had a com common ancestor 505 million years ago. Uh, let's not go there, it's a long time. I'm trying to get this done quite quickly. But, uh, but, uh, but the idea is that a human, kind of like what you were saying, is uniquely evolved sure. to be as intelligent as it needs to be. And when we think about intelligence in a unitary form, and we use a human standard to say that's what intelligence is, we miss the mark. Because even amongst the people we know, some of us are better at learning languages, some of us are better at learning gymnastics, we have different intelligences mm -hmm. within us. And I think what we should be doing is coming up with an idea of what intelligence is, and then looking for it in general across the diversity of species to really understand what our intelligence is because it would put it into perspective. Simone? Oh, it's my turn right now. You've said everything. So I'm going to talk about the next problems for humanity, right? We have evolved in small groups, actually, uh, small hunter-gatherers uh, troops. Uh, and, but we are the only species on Earth that has reached the point of starting as a small species, evolving as a small group species, and now we reach the point where we have millions and millions and millions of interactions every day. And our brains haven't yet evolved to process that kind of information. And we see all the problems with that right, right now in our societies where false information spread extremely quickly. Yeah. Well, that kind of thing doesn't happen in ant colony, for instance, or not as well. And so the next evolutionary thing that our brain has to do, or culture has to do, is evolve the mechanism to defend ourselves against these uh, problems that is caused by the rapid evolution into large, large societies that is kind of unique, I think, in the history of uh, life. Yeah, Susanna, I, I, how, how special are we? We're not. We're, we're, <laughs> one, we're, we're one more, spe biologically, we're one more species. Biologically, we are a large brain primate, the larger brain primate. Uh, primate. Um, that does, however, come with something that we've built to ourselves, and I completely agree with Simone, we've, we've built ourselves an enormous amount of knowledge that we pass on culturally. And that doesn't happen like that, that doesn't happen in one lifetime, meaning it's not the doing of one individual human, that's not the doing of the biological individual, that's the doing of our species over 200,000 years at the very least. And that's something that can be lost that yet, like that, if you just lose the opportunities to educate the, yeah. the next generations.